Hello everyone, Sula here. Again, talking about the IOPTRON GEM28 telescope mount. I brought it out here to my friend Katie's house. She lives in Los Altos Hills. It's a Bortle 4 site, and she was kind enough to let me put my telescope up in her driveway. Katie has a great driveway with lots of open space behind her, so it's a great place for stargazing. So I thought I'd try out my Optron mount again. And Katie has a lot of money and she owns a lot of telescope and astronomy equipment. And she's kind enough to let me borrow it from time to time because you know, all I have is that terrible Celestron astronomy binoculars, 15 by 70 with a lot of chromatic aberration. So now I've got this motorized mount and I thought I'd try it again because it gave me so many troubles with the knobs and you have to practice with it before you get it down to where it seats and then it can track better. So I'm gonna set it up right now before the sun goes down, which is nice because I haven't been able to do that for a while. So I already set the tripod legs up with the mount on it and I have the polar scope pointed at where I think Polaris is using my compass. And I always do that because it's easier to move this without all your gear on it than it is once you put the gear on. So I'm just putting on the spreader right now. Katie, what's that? telescope you have a Celestron 11 inch wow you gonna set it up tonight that'd be fun to look through I don't think I've ever looked through an 11 inch well I've looked through a 20 inch refractor at Chabot Space and Science Center that was fun it's a very old telescope next you make sure it's nice and level I'm just going to use the bubble level tonight. I forgot my carpenter level. And then once it's nice and level, then I'll put the telescope on. Just needs one minor adjustment. Now I'm going to put the counterweight on approximately where I think it needs to go. Make sure to put the toe stopper on. Attach the hand controller where it says HBX. And yes, my GPS module came. It's made my life so much easier. I don't have to keep re-entering all of my information every single time, yay. I think it goes into the eye port. I've got my cat lead acid battery, which is great, except it has a blue light when it's on. You have to put a towel over it and it'll blind you. And I'm going to use my Orion 80 millimeter while Katie sets up her 11 inch Maxitoff Cassegrain. I'm going to make this thing look like a baby. Child's play. Next, I have to balance. And by the way, I did replace that cute William Optics star diagonal because I thought it was defective. It was too big. Thing's gigantic. But you know what? The Bader Plan Planetarium one does the same thing. So I think actually it's these cheap ass Orion Plossel eyepieces that they give you when you buy a Dobsonian. You get a whole set. So, oh well. Still hard to get in there, but I do like this Bader, is it Bader or Baden Planetarium star diagonal because it's much smaller. However, when I take it off and I want to put my camera on because that 0.8x fuel flattener slash reducer is so heavy, I have to rebalance the whole thing. It's a drag, but, and I don't think I need a, a reducer, but I only use it because it makes the camera 
focus perfectly and fit perfectly in the telescope. Take off the caps of the polar scope. And, and this is the plug that illuminates the polar scope. Put that in. After I polar align, I always leave my caps off because inevitably this thing moves so easily it gets out of polar alignment, especially if you switch from eyepiece to camera and you have to rebalance. So I've just found it's best to leave them off because I end up polar aligning about three or four times. So I don't know what's the point of using a laptop and getting within one arc second when if you breathe on it, oh, it polar alignment moves. But that's just my opinion. I'm very opinionated. My hair looks insane because Katie and I went for a walk around Los Altos Hills and it was a very warm day for February. Okay, I bought some white fingernail polish and I think it's a good idea to mark where the weight goes with if you're using the same setup every time. I'd have to have two, one for visual observing and the other for putting the camera on because they weigh a different amount. But when I get a chance, I'm going to put white nail polish right here for visual observing. Okay, that looks pretty well balanced in RA. So the white nail polish will go there. I'll put a V for visual. Next, I'm going to balance it in declination. And I'll give you a close-up of these terrible buttons. This is the button that gives me trouble because when you turn it, you think it's locked, but it's not until it snaps. You see that it's not lined up, it's not in the zero position. So you have to practice turning it until it clicks. And you only want it to click when these two screws are lined up because that makes the reticule straight up and down. Thank God those motorcyclists left. They were so obnoxious. They were cussing and burping and they were just horrible and they were smoking pot and they were just obnoxious. Now I'm in a polar line. Okay. Alrighty. Now I'm ready. Katie, you got that 11 inch ready? I can't wait to look through it. But for now, I'll just be satisfied with my little low Ryan 80 millimeter. Katie says those men were part of the bodyguards that guard their house, and she's sorry for their crude and rude behavior. Thanks, Katie. Is the 11 inch ready yet? Goodness, that is so beautiful. It almost makes you want to cry. Just looking at M93 and Poopus is so delicate and beautiful. Even with the gibbous moon so low on the horizon, just beautiful. Even in my little telescope, can't wait to look at it through yours, Katie. It must look spectacular. It's just beautiful. 
Katie, thank you so much for letting me stargaze from your driveway here at your palatial abode in Los Altos Hills. This is a really great spread you got here and a perfect place for stargazing and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And thank you so much for letting me look through your gigantic 11 inch telescope. I just really love looking at the Christmas tree cluster. Uh, NGC, sorry, I can't remember the number, and also M93 and Poopus. Oh my goodness, it was just beautiful. Thank you so much. I hope you let me come back again sometime. So everybody, uh, my final conclusion about this mount is that after three tries, you do finally get it to track very well, but it takes a lot of effort, but it's worth it because it did track well in the end. And uh, so I still do recommend it. So thank you for joining me, Sula, your host. Have a peaceful journey through life, full of peopleless trails and dark skies forever. So long till next time, Sula signing off.